So the next topic for the panel discussion is powering regional markets, the East Side story. And the session chair is being held by Mr. Devarshi Chakraborty, VP Business Communication and Planning Interactive Avenues. I would also like to invite on stage Mr. Anand Bhomik, Associate Vice President, Anand Bajar Potrika and Bengali Magazine's AVP. Along with him, let me please invite on stage uh, Ms. Narendra Kaur, Head of Marketing Turtle, Ms. Prabhita Shah, Vice President Karukrit, and Ms. Ponumi Roy, CMO RSH Global Joy Personal Care. Can we please give all of them a huge round of applause? Come on, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you. A very interesting. Uh, panel, I would say, the reason being that it's agnostic of any uh, media, but it is, it is a very uh, important session in the sense that we are in Kolkata uh, and we are talking about powering the regional markets. Uh, in the earlier sessions, we have heard a lot of panelists and uh, you know, experts talking about regionalization, you're talking about many Indias, and I think uh, that makes uh, this panel uh, very important to understand some of the aspects of uh, regional marketing, especially from an East Side story perspective. Uh, we know that yes, there is a lot of uh, you know perception issue in terms of the Eastern region, in terms of business growth and opportunity, etc. However, in the recent past, we have seen that there is a lot of emphasis on uh, industries which are the traditional industries of tea, leather and today we are being touted, this region has been touted as a logistics hub for the Northeast, right? There's a tremendous growth that we are seeing in terms of the consumer uh, sentiment index, a, a recent, if I quote, a recent uh, research done by Access My India on consumer sentiment index, it has come across that Bengal uh, is in the top of the chart in terms of driving the overall consumer sentiment index by 7x compared to the rest of the country. The other uh, good news about Eastern India is the entire emphasis on infrastructure, right, which might not have a direct uh, connect to this forum of uh, marketing, brand and consumer, but there is a lot of uh, uh, talk about roads and uh, ports and metro rail projects etc but it has a indirect impact in the consumer spending and consumer uh, you know trying to have a better quality of life right so with that kind of a background uh, on the east side story let me throw open the you know the panelist with uh, a few oh hi Aaron. that there are certain uh, challenges that still exist uh, for, for this, this region. So let me start with uh, you, Paul, uh, uh, being, uh, being a marketer, that uh, you know, the consumers in, in Eastern India is, is fairly price uh, sensitive, right, to, to, to an extent. So as a brand, uh, a very prominent brand from this region, how you are tackling this with your uh, quality products, maintaining price sensitivity, quality, and overall uh, perception of a, of a national brand. Hi, good evening, everybody. So uh, just a little bit of a background. When uh, Joy Personal Care per se, actually one of our P1 markets have been the North Indian markets, despite being based out of Kolkata. And it's only been the last couple of years when extensive focus has been given to this market. And that's why this focus on uh, regional market and developing it is something very close to my heart. Sure. Uh, price sensitivity is not only uh, pertaining to this part of the country per se. I would rather say if you look at the uh, spending capacity and the mentality of people. Okay. Has been on a conservative side. That's what uh, most research, uh, research would have thrown sure. to us. That eastern side, when you talk of this side, there is, a, there is a tendency of saving more and spending less. Flamboyancy on that part as a consumer behavior has been less. Having said that, you touched upon a very important part and I think as a marketer, 
uh, it has a great relevance. The infrastructure development that has been started around five years back, extensively across the country and more so in this part, has actually given more monetary power in the hands of middle India, middle class, upper middle class, lower middle class. And that always gives you the capacity as a consumer to spend more. The right. question is, is it a need-based or is it a aspirational-based purchase decision or product or whatever you're going for? Uh, as a matter of fact, it's a great time for a brand or a product like me because as a genesis, we believe that we make uh, you know, great products, good products at an affordable price point and that is the reason why uh, in the skin world of skincare we thrive. Sure. So marrying that concept, if you see, uh, for us, this particular market has been a great play field and uh, it is only to our advantage in the last five years that we are seeing more and more demands coming up. And I wouldn't take this, I wouldn't use this platform to talk about only personal care or the, you know, the, the product that I try to sell. Uh, I would say that all these factors put together, uh, whether more, hand, more money in the hands of my consumer today, which has happened due to various factors and one of them has been infrastructure which has led to most people coming up from interiors to work right. as workers, getting more you know, wages, better standards of living, have uh, made the index so far very high. And uh, that's the way we have been uh, seeing the growth. The other part of it is uh, the brand story, perhaps. What have you done in terms of your narrative to hit that? Right. Uh, the core essence of my brand, as we have said, that okay, we've seen this development uh, of people having more to spend and we give affordable products at a good price point. We tried to understand the sentiment and every marketer would have repeated this, that India is not one and we have different cultures, connotations and stuff like that. Um, only distinction that uh, I would like to add on over here is a couple of things get very cliched in our country. When you say East, one of the dominant culture is Bengali culture. Yeah. Therefore, it is mostly spoke, spoken about and talked about. Uh, South, you go, you know, it is uh, Tamil Nadu that gets dominated. Uh, Hindi is altogether a cluster of people Hindi speaking. Uh, in the last five years, I think East needs to be now broken down as well. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. A. Uh, second most important thing is there is something called observation and there is something called insight. The difference is when you are in East, for example, if I'm talking of West Bengal, as an outsider brand, when you talk of, uh, when you ask what a Bengali is, it's mostly relevant to Alalpa Shadashari. Shidu Khala and uh, you know and Uludeva and stuff like that. But when you are uh, when you really want to go close to your consumers, your Gen Zs or whatever, you have to understand that they don't. Uh, if your brand is Bengali, will not talk to a Bengali in that language. Both two Bengalis just don't meet every day and say Namaskar, Apni That's not how it is, and that is where you need to strategize yourself. That you really need to go and understand what is an observation and what is an insight. There is a difference just by having a uh, Rabindranath Tagore's photo in the background and creating a communication and saying that, oh, you know what, I think I've got, no, that's a mere observation, that is familiarity. You need to go a little deeper and talk to your regional consumer in that manner so that you connect to the way they are living, breathing, talking now. Right. I think that is what I have been striving. I don't know whether I've got it right with my brand. But it's worked in our favor. Sure. And many points are there which has built this together. It's not a single one point uh, agenda that we're trying. Right. So, uh, so I, I think the, you, you really brought a different perspective to price sensitivity in terms of war, in terms of value, and how you're able to create that value through narrative observation. So, uh, Anindu, we were having a different, very interesting conversation at the foyer on this point, but your uh, you know, uh, publication group has a different take to price sensitivity. Uh, let's let's hear that. Yeah. So uh, I personally feel that uh, the Eastern Zone or Bengal as a market, uh, it is as price sensitive as any other zone in the country. Right. Uh, yes, obviously their price sensitivity is there. We have had similar experiences, but then you see, Anandavaja Patrika has been the highest priced product in the market. 
and by a considerable margin. And still we have been leader by, say, our competition has been sort of almost half of the quantum of circulation or readership that we command. So I think uh, it is more about the value for money that you deliver. And uh, like India, Bengal, Eastern Zone, each of these geographies has a huge market. And you have multiple buckets of consumers. So you have to have the right targeting for, in terms of the consumer that you want to reach out to. And if you can place on the table the right product at the right price, the consumer is always uh, uh, has a positive mindset to accept that product. Uh, I'll share one more example at one point of time in uh, the northern part of Bengal. Uh, there is a there is a uh, considerable competition who who has a more of a local focus in terms of the content. Got it. And we have a local focus, but that particular brand was uh, priced at a much lower point, price point than us, and we in a way got into that rat race. And then we realized that just to match the price sensitivity, we are probably walking away from our core proposition. So we picked up the price, we kept at a higher price point, we stuck to the local focus that AVP has always been known for, right. and we connected with the kind of consumers that we wanted to connect, and we were absolutely happy with that. So that's that's the take on the price. So, so, so interesting, both from uh, Paulomine and Indo, that uh, while you know the outside world might consider this this region to be a price sensitivity, but they have used it in favor of the brand. And say that that's not really a challenge, but more of an opportunity. Uh, one of the other challenge, uh, Narendra, which I want to put to you as again as a marketeer, is uh, there is always this tussle, especially in this region between a localized brand versus a national brand. A familiarity with a localized brand is more makes the region more loyal to versus to look at a, a, a bigger brand. Turtle is again a brand, a homegrown brand, if you can say it, but it has this national footprint. So have you really faced that uh, challenge or you too changed that into opportunity that no, being local is actually good or being national is make it more inspirational? Good evening, everyone. Very interesting question. Uh, the mics. Uh, can you hear? Uh, Hello. There? Hello. Yeah. 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 So, uh, total being a homegrown brand, when this year in July will be we will be celebrating 30 years of our uh, existence, our legacy. And this brand started from Calcutta. In fact, it started from Havra. People did not believe, you know, the kind of perception the brand had made. You know, even. Uh, I've been with the brand for the last 16 years and even when I, I remember when for the first time I was approached for the brand and somebody told me it's the head office is in Havra, you know. The campaigns what I've seen, that didn't give me the, I was really shocked, I said, oh, I thought it was an international brand, you know, that was the perception what we had. And till today, I mean, people when they come to us uh, who have been a loyal customers, so, and the brand always had a point of view. We've been uh, associated with our namesake, the protection of our namesake, the Turtle Survival Alliance. So we work with them extensively, Pan India. So that also really adds to a layer to the brand, you know, the way you communicate with the consumer. And uh, the kind of uh, brand pillars what we had, uh, and we will still have, it's uh, like the modern style or a global Indian appeal which uh, was well articulated through our campaigns and uh, through our merchandise in our stores. Uh, I think we cut across all genres over there. Sure. And today people are exposed, uh, digitally they are very much aware the kind of brands they are. You know? Of course they are. And uh, we extensively, uh, the Northeast, I mean the East contributes to around 65% to our revenue. Mm -hmm. And uh, Last two years, we've extensively uh, marched across Pan India, you know, more in uh, West and South. So, but then we were received with the same warmth over there. And uh, the thing of that local, and of course, the affinity is there, the local right. affinity is there, we, we being a brand. So, the advocacy is really high over sure. here, of course. Um, but then uh, the kind of uh, approach the brand had. We cut across all genres and uh, it makes it easy. I mean, your merchandise speaks about it, the kind of collapse, the national level collapse you have. 
and uh, the kind of uh, aspirational value the brand brings on the table that makes it easy or i'm sure in fact i think that is what also paulumi was alluding to the brand narrative etc uh promita for you again from a agency partner point of view one of the yeah. important medium especially from this part of the world is the out of home right and and again uh a challenge uh, that we see for this region is a certain uh, limitation of media be it digital be it offline we have spoken about certain media dark uh, markets the percentage of those media dark market is slightly higher in the eastern region compared to the rest of the region so where does that uh, again uh, becomes a big opportunity for a medium like out of form and you're able to you know deliver uh, you know using that out of form as a format for the audience here in this part of region um yeah i think um, whether it is east or you know the rest of india surely there will always be pockets where the dig- the digital penetration would be a challenge right um however uh, you know as an agency today when uh, we are designing campaigns if i'm talking on behalf of karukrit uh, we have actually gone much beyond our 30 by 30s 40 by 40s 80 by 40s right because like how the consumers are evolving uh, as an agency we also have to understand that for a consumer when he or she is looking at a brand whether she is looking at it on an 80 by 40 canvas or on a digital screen which is as small as our palm size or in a moving canter in you know a 10 to 20k pop group uh, right. village i think since morning what we've been hearing and uh, what we are also practicing is wherever there is a connect of what we are showing on any media platform right as i said we have a huge canvas of 80 by 40 we have a brilliant creative of you know uh, a garment or a personal care brand but honestly it has not touched the chord uh, with the person who is seeing it uh, you know at that point in time whether you are in a digital format or a traditional format you kind of you know you have you would have lost the connect so wherever there is a digital challenge yes uh, for agencies like us there is always an out of home uh, you know opportunity to connect which again we have started calling it very traditional very traditional but uh, uh, if traditional is the way to connect to even the new generation customers in lower pop groups in tier 3 towns uh, even at that point in time it is all about the narrative it is all about the product benefit that you are showing to uh, you know your target group i'll give an example so gone are the days where you would run a simple branded canter in a tier 2 tier 3 town and you know just publicizing your brand okay and you know take it for granted audience is looking at me wow my job is done i think uh, those days are gone well as an agency i would love to take on such assignments because i get paid um, but since i have been uh, in the initial part of my career on the other side I started my career in brands and now i am on the other side uh, i know as an ex brand manager that is definitely not working so today out of home in a digitally challenged environment actually gives an opportunity to do simple things like demoing your product uh, we did a 90 day rural activation campaign going to the most interior of villages in bihar in orissa in bengal where trying to establish the benefit that the cement brand uh, was trying to establish we actually had the entire infra set you know so it was about strength it's rural how best can you you know establish that well one of one thing is you start cementing something and show it the other thing is you have simple elements of you know a bull walker or a dumbbell or a barbell and you ask your audience to come and do a certain 
you know, display and say that if, you know, by the way, this cement is much more stronger. Apne ummeed se zyada strong. Got it. So these kind of narratives, these kind of integrations have huge opportunities in the traditional format uh, where there is today still a bit of an, op you know, challenge to go digital. Got it. So initially, uh, when you started this panel and I framed it the flow, I, I thought that these are the really uh, prevailing challenges here. But I've been hearing from all of you as a first level that actually all of you turned it into a great, great opportunity. This moves me to the second segment of, of this discussion is that, uh, uh, you know, so let me start with you, uh, Narendra, as uh, Turtle, as a brand. Uh, can you share with us, uh, you know, again, East, if I say not uh, with any disregard to any other region, we are very much, uh, I, I think in, in one of the earlier discussions, we talked about culture, you know, and, and uh, you know, East is a, is a region that encapsulates uh, cultural diversity a lot, right? So have, as a brand, have you explored that and have you seen that anything to do with cultural diversity, etc. consumer marketing initiatives around that has really benefited uh, to you as, as, as a brand, as a marketeer? So I will put it across as a CD. The East has a big cultural window, right. starting right from Durga Puja. Of course. And goes up to Assam and you know. So uh, the market, the window, the shopping market, I mean, that's huge, the buying consumer market. That you do not get anywhere else. The rest of India are more uh, prone to the wedding markets. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. That is more prone to the, like you have the Bihar, you have the Jharkhand, mm. uh, you have the West and South. Right. They are uh, more stronger in the wedding market. Uh, wedding season, but then uh, East, where we are quite dominant, we are the only brand we get that much of a window over there, mm. you know. And uh, when I so the campaigns what we have that is singular point of contact to cut across all the diversity, you know. That is uh, how we connect with the different regions. Right. And uh, going at each cultural level, I think we do lots of the you know, ATL and the BTL activities and whether the digital is strong. So you rope in the influencers, you rope in the uh, local celebs Absolutely. during those yeah. periods. Yeah. So, like for us, for the next six months, uh, we are banking very high because, I mean, the window is really large and right. the only brand to get this kind of uh, uh, space. Got it. That's interesting. So, follow me to you and one of the most... Uh, uh, very touching campaign that Joy has that with this entire acid uh, victim story, right? And, uh, and and there was a lot of resonation of that across not only in this region but across the country as well. A lot of people have really, uh, you know, appreciated the bravery the brand has shown. But but going forward, when we look at consumer marketing initiatives, while we have the products to sell, right? But how, how does a, a cultural uh, diversity of a brand and the preferences of the region play a very important role uh, to push through our communication and narrative that you spoke earlier about? Uh, yeah, so in this case, basi basically this was one of the first purpose-driven campaign that we had done, which started off from Skin of Courage. So putting that aside, bringing back to the fact that uh, Quite uh, around three years back, we took the decision of having a regional brand ambassador as well. Right. And I just clear myself when it comes to East, we were focusing on West Bengal per se. Right. So uh, we were taking up geographies at a time sure. while Pan India presence was there. For example, now we have West Bengal and we're looking at Maharashtra as well. Right. right. So uh, 2020, the pandemic year is when we started taking a focus in uh, Bengal and we started off by saying, you know, uh, why do we need a local celebrity? So somehow, um, as it would happen, uh, this was something that we have observed in China. It operates very similarly. With every passing region, they have a regionally, con contextually relevant, uh, cultural driven uh, you know, advertising or communication, how sure, do you call sure. it? When I say advertising, right. I just don't mean uh, an AV, right. any kind of activity. Got it. So, and we kept thinking that, you know, this is something very relevant to our country as well. And especially when it comes to East, as we 
we, since uh, HSM was our primary market, uh, we felt that we can't talk to the Bengalis in Bengal like a, a Hindi speaking person, right? We really need to get down and understand the, and that's when the relevance of the brand will come. And that, that's exactly what you were discussing earlier with her, uh, the local brands. Yeah. Why we face a lot of pressure in, uh, in uh, personal care actually. And uh, by default, Bengal has been one of those uh, places which has been infiltrated with a lot of local brands and MNCs. So how do you tackle that? So what is in it that they're doing right, that we go wrong? Uh, initially, while we were growing up, I remember all the TVCs being dubbed. There was one national TVC and then it was dubbed. Right. Okay. Uh, we said, you know, we're not going to do that. Let's not dub, which right. was a hard call. Uh, because I'm not a very extremely cash rich company as compared to the MNCs of the world. We took that call. We said, no, we'll go regional and let's talk to them like uh, they, like uh, their own, their, you know, somebody who can resonate with them. And therefore, the decision of taking a brand ambassador made it the right step because we were taking one of them. Right. Right. Uh, it was more closer, of course, now being influencers and all that sure, are more sure. micro level. Right. But here I'm saying from an opinion leader perspective, the person you see up there from an ideal perspective gives you that fact. Sure. So that was one of the things. Uh, then there are a lot of activities that you keep doing. For example, I'm present in a general trade, a modern trade format and in an e-commerce format. My first buyers are actually the dealer and distributors. Mm -hmm. So we started engaging with them through a lot of these programs that uh, the ATL. So as we all know, Bengal by far has a GEC uh, where regional contact, highest uh, delivering GRPs are there in Bengal. Right. So if you do a national plan on TV uh, with an HSM thing, you'll hardly have 40% coverage. You have to go really and do a separate plan and we do have a good media isolation and some of these programs that are there up on these things are almost like a daily ritual habit Go so ahead. we said you know we're going to get deeper into these programs spend a little more so that my first layer of people like my dealer distributors start you know recognizing me and patronizing me more in order to push my product out to my consumer mm. because that relatability factor my wife sees you on XYZ program 7.30 Saturday. So every little piece you put together and uh, of course the language and tonality uh, again worked in our favor, women brand, sentiments of women empowerment is pretty strong over here. Uh, some of these, uh, there were not many such, I can't mention all of them, but one thing uh, what we did was something I'm really uh, worked in our favor is during pandemic, uh, because we were a Calcutta brand. I remember we took this call saying that, you know, we have the Asia's largest red light area, Shonagachi. And of course, the sex workers, approximately 16,000 sex workers, they didn't have a place for work. And hygiene, of course, is a concern there. We took up this initiative of actually going out and taking the, you know, a month long. Uh, you know, uh, free delivery of all the hygiene kits to them. And again, the opinion leaders in this part of the country picked this up, supported this, it went. So now I am really not only looking at Pujo, to be very honest, you always, because the clutter is so much, we have abstained from during Pujo, but all these little, little things where you know your city well, you know your people well, you, what, what do you know and what you are trying to project yourself, this little initiative actually has helped us build that gap model. Sure. With them. That's good. Uh, so, coming to you, Anindo, from this... Uh, we are just about getting started, I guess. Anyway, uh, coming to you, Anindo, this intricacies that, uh, you know, Polomi has spoken about, and you being a, one of the largest media platform from this part of the world, you have access to a lot of such, you know, stories about content, etc. So, how do you see as a platform that how could that become a you know stepping stone for for the agencies for the brands to come together to give uh, a meaningful or a relevant uh, uh, you know platform for the audience 
See, I'll take that question in two parts. One, uh, the how we have addressed that, and in fact, the cultural diversity is how we have addressed that through the product, sure. and also beyond the product. Which in a way, because see, we act as a we act as a platform. We act as a catalyst between the readers and our advertisers. Yeah. So if we create that platform, the advertisers can very well be on that. Uh, in terms of the product, an interesting, uh, uh, I would say, modifications that we did some time back in our, or in all our regional streets, we have created sections which uh, create content customized for that micro geography. So even if you look at Bengal, it is actually a, a sigma of micro geographies, micro cultures, and different uh, practices. Right. So we created segments for content to be created by people from that geography, which essentially creates a sense of identity for the consumers there. Right? And that pans across uh, agricultural practices, it uh, takes into account the cultural practices, it takes in, uh, into account the educational happenings, all that stuff. So we have various sections on various days just to address that cultural diversity, the social diversity that we have. The next, uh, beyond product, see, uh, when we talk about Durga Puja, it is a festival that you celebrate. For us, it is more important to be part of the cultural life of that geography. I'll take an example. Suppose there's a small town called Baluga, which is the district town of South Dinajulia. Now, there's a huge theater group working out of Baluga. They create a lot of innovations in theater. They travel across to various theater festivals in Bengal, uh, in India, mm. right, across the nation. Now, how many of us are actually recognizing that? So for us, it is more important to spot those talents, to spot those cultural happenings, and how they are constantly improvising their art, how they are improvising their creations, and how they are presenting them in front of a bigger audience. So we as a platform, we as a brand, are constantly working to bring those people on the forefront. Got it. Right. Uh, very, uh, very uh, uh, differentiated approach. Uh, so promoted to you, I mean, while we are at uh, culture and festivities and Durga Puja being now the biggest uh, uh, exporter, if I may say, of culture from this part to the rest of the world, now being a judge of UNESCO's you know, tag uh, again as a as as a out of home, right? And, and Eastern India is very strong in that perspective. So, how do we really marry culture and uh, you know format to bring the story alive that each of the marketeers and the platforms are trying to say? Right? Yeah, I think as uh, uh, you know, you were mentioning about uh, how East is very very vibrant about the festivals, yeah. and uh, Anindo also just mentioned. So I think as an agency, uh, what we try to bring to the table is the intricacies of festivals. And you know, since we don't have time, I'll give one example. Um, Durga Puja doesn't need any introduction to you know anybody in the world, actually, uh, given the kind of hype and how we as Bengalis, I shouldn't say Bengalis, everybody staying in Bengal is a part of uh, Pujo. We took one nuance out of it. You know, on the eve of Mahalaya, we know that the eyes of the goddess is drawn. Yeah. What we in Bengali call Chokhuda. Yes. And uh, coincidentally, Karukrit's office and you know we are we are very close to Kumatuli. Uh, so we have the advantage of knowing all the stages of idol making and what all goes uh, for the past five to six months. You know, in that uh, Kumor hub. So drawing the eyes of the goddess is a extremely significant thing for the festival take that as you know one part of the triangle the second part is most bengali women use kajol yeah. it's it's a part of our culture number 3 we have a brand we we it's we had we spoke to lakme iconic kajol so we put together all of this we partnered with one of the biggest Pujo panels of Calcutta, which is Ahiri Tola. We curated an event for them and we named it the Lakme Iconic Chokhuda, where symbolically the goddess's eyes of Ahiri Tola was drawn by the artist with the Lakme Iconic Kajal. Oh. So this is the power of out of home when you merge it 
with you know the blood lines in your system when you do it for a bihu we do it for rajo in orissa we are doing it for rath yatra in orissa we did it for the shanghai festival in manipal so uh, uh, not manipal sorry um, shillong uh, yes so these are the things where we take it to the second layer pull out things integ you know integrated with the nuance of the brand and merge it with that slice of life right. to me that's the power of uh, you know the eastern region where festivals are extremely you know the congregation point and it's a part of every woman's every uh, right. consumer fascinating uh, the other part that I'm going to throw us out Thirty seconds, please. Uh, the other part is that yes, we are talking about you know diversified culture and other you know challenges which all of you have turned into opportunity. The other unifying factor is the entire youth as a, as a market, right? The earlier uh, fireside chat spoken about Gen Zs, the opportunities there, etc. Again, maybe twenty seconds each from uh, from all of you. That how are you looking at this segment uh, specifically through your uh, marketing initiatives? So uh, currently, uh, yeah, the buying power is there in the hands of the youth. Right. And uh, we, as a brand, are going for a brand refresh. Okay. Because uh, we understand that we need to be uh, more relevant to this TG now, and uh, and they're consuming a lot of content. Right. So uh, digitally, we're going very uh, aggressive, whether it's the e-commerce or a digital presence. Right. And. Uh, With that, we are launching. In fact, we've launched uh, some of the key categories, uh, which gets associated, you know, which transcends well into this uh, Gen uh, Z. Gen Z, yeah. Yeah, and uh, this particular segment is very high on uh, brand ethos, like sustainability. They really mm -hmm. latch onto the brands uh, who speaks about it, yeah. where they feel that yeah, I mean, this is brand is doing something. is contributing something and they feel good being associated with that brand you know that brings a kind of a satisfaction to them you know so uh, we've added a category of uh, hand woven fabrics where we have taken some few hundred villages and uh, so we've given an employment and we're making special hand woven fabric from them and so that narrative when it's getting connected you know we getting eyeballs got it so that is one of the ways uh, sure. to get associated right with Follow me. I'm afraid you have 20 seconds. It's a very big subject, so nothing much to say. It's a lot to say, so let's just let's just be frank to that. We started this journey long back. Identified they're the next. We got to impress them, hug them, make them the next big thing. All marketers dream only about Gen Z. Regional way, uh, I think only one distinctive factor. There's a lot of consumption of regional content that happens significantly high in this part of the country. that gives us an opportunity to engage identify them. them that is a very big distinction that i that i've seen when you see data as well and this part of the country's you gen z still have a huge appetite of consuming or engaging in regional language got it yeah. that's it and don't okay uh, so uh, two specific initiatives in terms of the existing product so obviously we are playing around with the content of the product making it a uh, more visual presentation rather than a more textual presentation and all and additionally we are also creating digital platforms which will create content because you know the problem with newspaper is that you try to connect with various buckets of consumers through a single product which right. gets created every morning yeah right so there are obviously uh, boundaries there are constraints so we are trying to overcome that through creation of digital platforms which we have launched even in the bengali space we have launched and so that's the way forward for us from the last few words yeah so as uh, media owners uh, we are now uh, putting a lot of focus on uh, building digital out of home and where we feel that the medium becomes much more interactive something that resonates more with the youth and uh, we are also investing a lot in advertising rights uh, in places like the metro uh the stations where uh, youth footfall uh, is significant so from a media development perspective these are the two areas which we are focusing on oh, great so so this entire uh, you know the powering regional markets i think uh, are very uh, important uh, points in terms of 
brand narrative in terms of owning the culture about creating uh, you know content uh, which is which is uh, you know both regional and contextual to the region and also looking at forward i think the east side story is a story which is not just restricted to east maybe it's not only powering it's already powered at this point of time so thank you for your insights etc and uh, thank you audience for being patiently hearing to this wonderful conversation thank you so much uh, thanks a lot to the entire panel uh, for sharing your valuable insights with us